John here, guys. Today we're talking about the 533 Switchback HD prototype, but the production version is going to be coming along to where you can snag it up very quickly. HD, this is the first frame on the market that is fully compatible with both 20 by 20 stack and shark bite and DJI. So regardless of whatever HD flavor you're deciding to experiment with, race with, compete with, stay tuned to the end because we're actually going to talk with Heads Up himself, DRL champion, owner of 533, and we're going to get some footage of him flying it on one of the craziest tracks we've ever built, ever. Wow, the trees have so much definition comparison. So as HD systems become more popular, we wanted to kind of tailor towards that. Everybody's kind of, you know, there's the debate between Sharkbite and DJI of like, which one's going to be more popular for racing. But one of the biggest problems is like all of our frames, we obviously use analog. And I mean, our VTXs are like the size of a quarter. HD's not to that level yet. And it might be, but it's not right now. So um, we needed a, a little bit of a bigger frame. And because I hated the idea of just making the stack taller. Yes. Um, and it like, you end up with these tall standoffs and then you hit something and then your camera is just like turned sideways. So... What we decided to do is like kind of make it a longer frame and like they kind of I think it makes it look cool and then like we had this little bit more real estate to add the 533 logo on there. Basically what this is is it's for DJI and Sharkbite and it has capability to run two stacks so you have a lot of these now are like the, the Vista is like a 2020 stack and then you have your normal 2020 stack so you can run your 20 by 20 stack or an all in one like the production version will actually have the 25 by 25. Uh, so you can run the, the AIOs that are becoming more popular nice. and then you can run your HD system like in the back or either on the top plate or on the bottom. And it really just makes for like a really compact frame that uses your arms from your analog quads so you can oh, okay. have your Switchback Pro arms. So we wanted to keep it backwards compatible in that way. But also like more, the HD cams right now, the micro like size instead mm -hmm. of nano. So we wanted uh, our current frames, like our uh, Switchback Pro frames are nano only right now. Nano is like the most popular by far. Yeah, for and sure. And it's, it's a no brainer to run nano. The more HD stuff like the DJI HD cams are great uh, for like the micro ones. And then now this new HD Zero camera coming out for Sharkbite, yeah. which is micro. So we wanted to tailor towards that, which is what this frame was kind of, kind of made for. Nice. This is the first one that I know that's really compatible with both DJI and Sharkbite. So whichever HD system you like. Yeah, and it's not, I mean, there's other frames that are compatible, but like you had to have 35 millimeter standoffs right. or make it really tall. But this, we wanted to keep it compact, use your race arms. So it's like a race frame that's like, ta that's truly tailored towards more of the HD systems, uh, which I think as HD becomes more popular in the next year, which I really think it will, and haters will hate, but uh, I really think it's uh, the way that this industry kind of will go, whether you like it or not, which I think is cool. It's innovation, really is. Right. Um, and um, we want to tailor towards that and make it uh, accessible and to where you're not having this super janky looking frame that has tall standoffs. Uh, yeah. Just so you can run HD with your friends. Well, and, they, and they bend. If you have really tall standoffs, you have a hard hit. All four yeah. will bend. Yeah, I think standoffs <laughs> are like the biggest innovation we will see some see from frames in the next like year because like all the standoffs right now kind of suck. Like you know, like even the twenty five like twenty five millimeters as tall as you can reasonably go. But I think that would really be awesome if we can get some better standoffs in FPV yeah. somehow. Nice, awesome. Totally. Thanks, Evan. Yeah. If you guys want to get one of these. They're gonna be coming out with a production version very soon. Yeah, so Johnny Five's a prototype tester. We had, I think, 50 <laughs> made. We like did a little beta thing. If you buy, want to try, want to try it. So if they're bad, then you can blame him. <laughs> he didn't tell us. <laughs> but no, I, I'm really excited to see it come out and uh, hope maybe some HD spec racing in the future. Maybe that's a thing. Uh, that would be cool. Put everyone on the same level. When I first saw this, I thought that this was like the stretch limo of drone racing frames, but it's more like. I would be remiss if I didn't mention at least the open racer designed by Lamon Yvonne. You technically can also run Shark Bite on here if you do the whoop board, but if you want to be able to run 20 by 20 and Shark Bite, this is just about the only option out there. The reason why Houston has evolved in a different direction than the rest of the racing community is because we fly crazy tracks. We fly on concrete. We do add a little bit more weight for things like motor protection. We add a little more weight for things like component protection. So how much heavier is this? Well, this open racer with DJI and this protective TPU pod on board is 355 grams with the props and a strap. This 533 HD is 300 grams even. 
300 grams. So you save over 50 grams on this formula. 533 is known for having some of the most lightweight but still very durable frames and Heads Up actually took this for quite a crash test, crashing from about 20, 25 feet when he was piloting it. Man, not a scratch on it. So very, very durable. They also included some mounting holes on the top plate. So it's really versatile. You can mount your components any which way you would like. And so I did that just to get a little bit more room in there. Everything fits in here perfectly. Now, the only thing that I don't like that I would potentially approve is maybe give us a little bit more motor protection. Now for your average racer in an open field, that's not really a thing. So this is my own Houston crew mind speaking. 533 gives you very strong configurations. There's a nice thickness of these arms. And like I said, 25 foot crash, nothing broke at all. I also would like a camera mount design that will give you a little bit more protection right here. I really, really like this TPU antenna mounting thing right here. It's this little TPU shelf right here with a couple of zip tie holes means that you can really mount any antenna. As mentioned, these arms are fully compatible with the 533 Switchback Pro. So if you wanna try your hand in HD, you don't have to have, worry about the full commitment. I really, really like that things are fully backwards compatible with their Pro line. Now let's take a look at that crash test that Heads Up did for us. I put him on the track with my Shark Bite system. How often do I actually get to have my quad flown by the best racing pilot in the world who also happens to be the owner of this company of the product i'm reviewing of course i had to take the opportunity i'm gonna have another video coming out about racing tips with heads up because he crashed he gave us the crash test i'm not blaming shark bite for that i do really feel like it impacts me the 16 by 9 view with the top and the bottom cut off but uh heads up was saying that it really doesn't bother him um, I feel like he could fly pretty much any configuration anywhere and he would still be really, really good at it. What did bother him though was my rates. I do have a lot of kind of a curve at the end of my rates, a lot of expo there. And he said that he's used to a more linear curve and you can see right before he crashes, he's kind of feeling the edge of the stick. So you see him kind of go like that. He's trying to tell where it is and I could tell he's distracted by that. And all of a sudden a ghost branch appears. So not a shark bite issue you could see he flies this thing on the track incredibly fast he was down with the houston crew for training for the upcoming drl season and our guys were putting him through his paces he had been flying a much larger much slower racer for all weekend and so he got to really try one of these blisteringly fast uh, multi-gp hd quads it's just amazing that he can pick up anyone's quad regardless of the rates or anything and fly on a track like this if you want to try hd do it like this there are some people that are making mounts that will allow you to mount the whoop vtx to maybe the top plate and that is another option if you want to stick it into a regular size frame if you do the whoop board depending on what kind of top plate you have you're component is going to stick a little bit out the side and I have had instances where I ended up crashing into a gate or a tree from the side and any electronics that are sticking on the side are going to totally get smashed like that. So this really protects all of the components and that's what you want out of a racing frame. You're going to be crashing these things at 80, 90 miles an hour and so you want to be able to protect that $90 video transmitter inside there and this $50 camera is really nice. Thanks guys. Thanks guys.